artificially going between the trees now. Check out the sun coming between the trees over here. That's a pretty awesome sight right there, guys. Foggy, creepy morning in a swamp. <laughs> I sure hope we can catch some fish. All right, guys, I have literally fished half of this lake and I haven't got the first bite. Um, but the good thing about being out in the Hatchie is there's like 20 lakes out here. I don't know how many lakes, there's a lot of lakes. So it looks like the river has gotten into this one. The river must be up pretty high because the water clarity changed right here. And I think the river's right over there. And there are literally zero fish biting. So I'm about to take out, load my boat back on the trailer and go hit another pond because uh, this one does not seem to be faring very well. Let's go to another lake. All right, guys, I have switched gears. I am at Lake O'Neill now. This is lake number two for the morning. I fished Swan Lake for an hour and a half, never got the first bite, so I am switching. And I have never fished this lake this time of year. I've only fished this lake like twice. I'm gonna start out by throwing this uh, six to eight foot diving crankbait. It's uh, it's quite bright. I do not have a clue if it's going to work, but this is where I'm going to start. And I've got a plain white Kitek on that rod there. And then I'm going to just change baits until I figure out which one works. We'll see how we do. And just so you know, if you happen to be out here at O'Neill Lake, I'm going to try to hold this guy without getting stuck. Let me show this guy up close. If you catch one of these at O'Neill Lake, you're required to take it out of the lake. Look at these teeth, guys. See that? The rules of this lake, it actually reads that if you catch one of these, it's mandatory that you take it out of the lake. And so I just caught one. Um, and so I'm going to tie it up on a stringer and throw it in the back of the boat. I didn't even bring a cooler because the bass at uh, O'Neill Lake right now are catch and release only. So you can't keep them even if you wanted to until like June. Again, largemouth are all catch and release right now. So I'm gonna get them back in the water as soon as I can. They want them to spawn. I think their numbers are low. in this lake. I'm going to have to get a new super fluke. They didn't beat that one to pieces. Guys, the color I'm fishing is uh, it's a salty super fluke 
bait fish. It's actually the color is called bait fish. All right, do it again. these chain pickerels up today I've had so many of them bite and like that right there they get off real easy so let me get this one on a stringer and we'll see if we can't catch some more I'll let you see him up close whoa those teeth can you see them these suckers are biting very aggressively all right guys let's talk about how these chain pickerels are in this lake first off we don't have a lot of chain pickerels around here or muskies or any of that type of fish we're in the mid-south they do exist. They're in all the river systems around here. Mississippi River, Hatchie River, Don Connor, Wolf. All these rivers have them, just not in very high quantities. So if you want to catch one around here, it's better if you can find them in a lake like this. And again, this is Lake O'Neill at the Hatchie National Wildlife Refuge. But just look how these fish bite. They are very aggressive. They tag it really quick. And you can see in this lake, the water is tap water clear. It's super shallow through most of the water. You can see that I'm right out in the center of the lake and these fish are just tagging back to back to back. And they're biting this reaction style bait um, for its erratic motion. I'm throwing the zoom super fluke out and I'm keeping it moving erratically through the water trying to get them to bite. Like right there, there's one sitting on the bottom that I just mouth hooked and I was trying to get him to bite. But most of the time I'm keeping it moving and these guys are very finicky. And so you'll get one to chase it and they're just running up trying to get up to the bait and you'll see them right behind the bait just kind of lurking but they won't commit and it's that erratic motion that triggers them into biting and i think i would have done better had i had some kind of bait attractant that i could have sprayed on this like some bait made or some gulp juice or something like that i think i could have done a little bit better this was the salty zoom super fluke so it did have that salt flavor in the water uh, but it, it, it only seemed to, I landed five fish and I probably had realistically at least 15 chain pickerels bite on this day. I had a lot of bass bite too and I missed a lot of those. Um, but the chain pickerels were, they are thick in this lake. And as you can see, they come off very easily. Like, like even when they're hooked, they come off. And so trying to land one was very difficult. So the way that I nose hook my zoom super fluke was critical as well i think you could almost do better throwing a bait with treble hooks but i didn't have any that were reaction style crankbait so you want like a jerk bait like a rapala or maybe even a suspended jerk bait like a mega bass or something like that would probably work fairly well in the same situation that i'm doing here maybe even a small glide bait i think it would work um, i'll have to go back and try that and see if it does but while you're out there, I mean, you're going to catch a bunch of largemouth. And again, the largemouth are catch and release until like June. But it's got, there's some nice bass in this lake. Check this guy out. Is that not a nice bass? <laughs> I thought he was a little bit bigger than that, but a little over two pounds he'll do.
See, I can see those light spots on the bottom. That's bass beds. I don't see the bass, but I'm not right over top of them. Oop. That is definitely beds. They might be old beds. I don't know. They're definitely beds of some sort. Oh, yeah, something just tagged. Oh, I got him. Oh, wow. Decent fish, too. Wow, look at this toad. Wow. Dang. Wow. Dang. Caught that dude right in the bottom. Look at that dude. Holy crap. That's a nice fish. I told you those were bass beds out there. Let's let her go back. Ooh, there was a, I don't know if that was a turtle foot or a fish coming up. Ooh, got him. Ooh, yeah, another pickle. If he'll quit flopping, I can get him off. Whoa. Pretty fish. Big teeth. Oh, wow, there was a fish. Oh, dang, it's a bass, too. He was on that stump. He went that way. Dang. Oh, oh, wow. There's a big pickle of gar right there. Oh, that's a gar. I didn't think they had those in here. I'm going to catch one of those, too. Dang, he's down in the muck. That's nuts. I've never seen a fish do that. That gar just swam down in the muck on the bottom to hide. Ooh, wow. Wow, that's a crappie. Dang. Are you kidding me? Dang it, man. Look, dude. That is a big, fat black crappie. I would have never thought there'd have been one of them in here. Well, turtle's trying to cross the road. Let's do a good deed for the day. Let's not let him get run over. I think he's trying to go over here. And there you go. All right, guys, that's Lake O'Neill. I'm out of here for the day.